Welcome to RTA Motorsports. Hello everyone and welcome Crash here, this is RTA Motorsports, hopefully the uh, stream is working, I kind of see we have some funky stuff going on with YouTube now, um, alright, so we tried to do a stream just a little while ago, we were having some issues and it, if you, in case you have this issue, turns out ACC um, with this wheel for some reason we're using the AccuForce um, it like cleared the settings for it. So we had to go through and basically remap the steering um, that this wheel, we want to use this wheel for steering. And then it just didn't feel right. I was like, there's no force feedback. What the heck is going on in the settings? All the force feedback settings were zero. Um, so if your wheel feels weird, check your force feedback settings. Um, took me a little bit to figure that out, but that's kind of what's going on. Other than that, so let's let's start it back up and being that we're starting the stream we're going to start fresh i just want to go over a few of the things that um now we have in this version 1.0 release uh we are using um i was using like custom settings before for the graphics now we're just going to use it on epic and i just kind of want to see what's happening now uh if there was any graphical optimizations um we are like I said, we're going to use Epic to see what happens with it. We have a 2080 Ti. Um, we do have a Ryzen 2700X overclocked a little bit. So you get an idea of what type of system we have. We were in a race hitting like high 70s, low 80s at Monza. So not the best frame rate, um, especially for this panel. This is a 3840 by 1080. Uh, so it's it is a lot of screen real estate, but it basically it's you know two 1080p uh, 27 inch monitors side by side. Um, so hitting in the 70s with those graphical settings I used to have isn't the greatest. But you know what? I'm gonna crank it up to Epic, and we're gonna see what we're gonna get. Let me change the view so that way you could all see what's going on here. And uh, pretty much what we're gonna be uh, let's see. I just noticed. My mic is way down in volume. There we go. Let's get that up just a little bit. Um, in options, another thing I noticed here is under video, um, I couldn't find a setting for ray tracing. So I don't know if that's something that's going to come later or if it's here, just I'm not seeing it if it's named something else. Um, for the most part, a lot of our settings carried over, which is nice to see. Uh, but like I said, we're going to use everything on Epic, and I just kind of want to see uh, what happens frame rate wise. If we get around the same frame rate that we were getting before um, with it now on Epic, there must have been some sort of optimization that happened. That'll make me very happy. Um, but yeah, let's go through the car list. What do we have now? So you can see here we <laughs> we have the Audi, the Audi R8 LMS. Um, we have the previously known Ferrari 488 GT3. That's from a older update. We now have the Mercedes AMG GT3. This is one of my favorite cars, mainly for the sound of the engine. Sounds just amazing. Uh, to my surprise, we do also have the Porsche 991 GT3R. I didn't think that they would really incorporate this many cars on the V1, um, the version 1.0 release date. I didn't think they were going to have this many ready. Uh, we already know about the Lamborghini um, Huracan, uh, but this is the Lamborghini Huracan ST. So this is this is different than what we already experienced. We now have the Honda NSX GT3, which is a nice surprise as well. I really didn't think this car would be ready. Uh, we have the Lexus RCF GT3. I didn't even know anything about this car uh, being added to the pack. Uh, the Jaguar G3, the Emil Frey, we already know this car. 
uh, the writer engineering R dash EX GT3. Uh, this was another surprise vehicle. I didn't know anything about this is from the 2017 model, the AMR V12 Vantage GT3. I know a lot of you guys uh, were really hoping that they would release a car, uh, an awesome Martin. So here we are. Uh, this is specifically from AMR, uh, but it is the 2013 vehicle, but it still it still looks stunning, still looks gorgeous. Uh, the Bentley Continental GT3, this is the one that we've been racing with. We already know, it, just like the Nissan GTR Nismo, this is the 2015. Um, but we also have the Porsche 9912 uh, GT3 Cup. This is a 2017 model. Uh, the Bentley Continental GT3, this is basically the um, last year's car, uh, the 2018. But you can just see how much newer this car looks. All these... Um, aerodynamic basically holes right here in the front that we didn't have before. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see what the interior looks like. Uh, the BMW M6 GT3, and we are back to the Nissan GTR Nismo GT3, the 2018, and back to the McLaren 650S GT3. Um, oh, actually, not back because you guys haven't seen that yet, but the, we do have the McLaren 650S GT3. This is the old Lamborghini Huracan GT3 we already were exposed to, and now we're back to the Audi. So there is quite a few cars now. So this update uh, was a little over six gigs. I want to say it was like six and a half or 6.9. It was like, it was around there. It was in <laughs> the upper part of six gigs in for just this update, and we could see why. So let's see what other changes we have. Um, we're gonna try the Audi R8 LMS. Uh, just, just on a practice session, I'm gonna, Try to jump in a few of these cars just to get an idea. Um, we do now have all the tracks here that were on the side. So we have Barcelona, Nürburgring, we already know, Hung Hungaring, Hung Hungar Hungaroring. I, I can never pronounce that one. Sorry, sorry everyone. Spa, uh, Masano World Circuit, we already know, Circuit Paul Ricard. Uh, we now have Silverstone. We also have Brands Hatch and, of course, Mons and Zolder. Um, we're going to take these cars around. Let's see. I'm thinking. We'll go around spa. And, um, we have weather clear, dynamic weather on, but we're kind of leaving everything about the same. We're going to try to leave it clear and, of course, all everything on pro. Um, as far as the assist, we don't really have any assist on except for engine start. Um, but we're going to try to keep everything the same for each car, same track, same track, uh, same weather. So that way, you know, we kind of get an idea how each car feels. Because one thing that really surprised me when this title was first first came out was how different a lot of the cars felt from one another how different the lamborghini felt from the uh the bentley and everything as it should but you know some racing titles out there they kind of lose that you know you really don't feel the dynamic difference between one another so we already set the fov in this car here um but actually limped let's make sure we get our chat up. I just noticed we lost our chat. There we go. I don't know why that's not staying on top. But so far in the pits, we're hitting about 104 frames per second. We do experience... Oh, yeah, now, now I know why. Um, actually, one second. Let me do one thing. So I did set this to run in full screen, um, which even though I already thought it was, because it still does take up the whole screen. Uh, but we would lose our chat otherwise, so I don't want to do that. And definitely ask any questions if you have any. 
All right, finally, let's get this car on the track and let's see what it feels like. We do have the motion rig going, so if you experience some camera shake, or if you're wondering why we're getting some camera shake, that is why. So still driving through these pits. No time pressure. Stay clear of the curbs. We are experiencing around here 96 frames per second again with a 2080 Ti uh, and a Ryzen 2700X overclocked uh, just a little bit. Kind of curious to see what type of rule system has been put in if they're also going to get you for speeding in the pits. If you uh, enable that feature, I'm just checking to make sure that the volumes are good. Tires are still really cold. So far, everything looks gorgeous. Colors are really vivid. This car is turning. Now, we're only on the safe preset, which I've been using the aggressive preset for most of these cars. I like the turn in. I like the feel of the aggressive preset. But, uh... Even with this car not yet warmed up, I really do like the stability of it so far. A little bit, a little bit of understeer there. does feel very fast out of the hole as far as acceleration goes. Whoa. Wow, okay. I just got off the throttle a little bit. And that was, that was a serious clinch moment there. I was not expecting the car to do that. So this car is kind of like a, uh, I don't know, it feels like, it says congratulations, I unlocked the safety rating. Um, whoa, whoa, whoa. This car feels like a bunch of different cars. Um, Turning is like the Ferrari. Acceleration kind of feels like the Lamborghini on the straight and in the faster turns. It kind of feels like the GTR. There's a few, all, well, that one off throttle section. kind of spooked me a little bit. I wasn't expecting the car to handle like that with me coming off throttle, but Dev definitely left foot braking this car. Keeping my foot on the throttle a little bit, trying to keep some stability in the rear. Oh yeah, there is a grip. There is a grip. Rear brakes are still kind of, uh, still kind of cold. That's still. Trying to keep the car on the track, making sure we're not overdriving too much. This 
car is going to take a little bit of practice to make sure I master it. My gosh. It does not like coming off throttle in that turn. That is that is funny. And I didn't even completely come off throttle. That was just a little light sort of. I'm going to give this car one more lap and then I'm going to switch it up. Very lively. I really do enjoy. I'm going to really enjoy learning this car. I'm surprised how it's behaving on the safe preset, to be honest with you. Oh, break braked a little later there. And it didn't like that at all. <laughs> it did not like that at all. Braked a little bit later just to see how it would handle it. And uh didn't work out for me. Sure with a little bit of practice, maybe I can make that break zone work. But yeah, that was a little too much. Maybe I didn't downshift fast enough, maybe I didn't get on the brakes hard enough. You overstep the boundaries in this car, it definitely punishes you. This is not as forgiving as I thought it would be. We're just going to kind of stay in it on this turn. I want to see how it handles it. There we go. Okay, so you just got to keep your foot planted and trust the suspension. Alright, so let's pit this car in. The FOV looks good. Everything feels really good. Um, and again, I, you know, I'm running it on Epic right now. Everything looks absolutely gorgeous. This game engine is really sweet. Um, the modeling of spa feels as familiar as it should that's a nice little reticle there kind of telling me where to pit it says where to stop that seems new i don't remember that specifically that there there we go Come on, let's go. <laughs> that was quick all right so let's check out a different car here uh, very impressed with that Audi. Um, I don't know if it's that lively normally. I'm not too familiar with driving the Audis. Um, next, let's jump into the McLaren 650S GT3. Very curious to see how this car handles this setup. Uh, the loadings for, I mean, although it is practice, we're not really loading a race or anything like that. They seem appropriate and very fast. So you saw how fast that went. I was uh, I was pretty quick. All right. So you can see again, we do have to adjust the FOV. It's per car. 
Um, the FOV, actually, I should say our seating position. We need to adjust our seating position. I uh, go to view settings, the FOV is still at 27, which should be for what I need. Um, the distance, we're going to back that up to negative two height. That should work about there. No. So I do like at least the FOVs carried over, but the driver and wheel, you have to make them hidden per car. Um, dash cam factor, all that sort of stuff is all new. Uh, I really don't know what it does, but, you know, I'm going to have to look into that a little bit more and save. Make sure everything you adjust, you save. Uh, for this car, for the seating position I would normally like, which is right about here, we don't really have any good mirror, mirror view, which is uh, unfortunate. Um, I still feel like we're a little bit low in the seat. Let's see. There we go. Now the mirror is just coming into view. That's what it was. We... We're a little bit high in the seat. Okay. Sounds sounds very similar to how this car sounds on in other simulators you know what you know what i want to adjust the view just a little bit more i kind of feel like now i'm like way too high looking down um maybe if we drop the seat down and then pitch it up a little bit yeah that feels a lot better and again if you're just joining in i appreciate it we do have chat up and working um we have our three degrees of freedom motion rig going this prosimu t1000 so if you have um any questions feel free to ask them again this is opening day of version 1.0 for a settled course of competition very exciting very big car list too i'm really surprised they were able to release this many cars on opening day Hitting about 76 frames per second. Cold tires, warm heart. <laughs> nice and easy here. Again, safe preset. We're not using anything else. Just kind of getting a, a general idea of what the car is doing. Turning is slower than the Audi R8 LMS, believe it or not. I'm definitely feeling the co cockpit nature of this car as far as a really big A pillar here on the left side. Again, we're going to also look at this sort of stuff at a later time in VR. But everything, uh, everything looks really good. Interior looks good as far as like the dash material. The 
sound is really cool. They definitely did wonders in their sound department for this title. Ah, uh, stay in there. Nope, way too wide. What I appreciate now is being that we have such an experienced team on this title, the Kuno's team. They brought a lot of their expertise, their track layouts, their scanning of the tracks. And everything feels as it should as far as track layouts. Everything feels very familiar to what you remember, whether you're racing in iRacing or any other sort of title that has laser scan tracks prior to Seto Corsa, race from racing experience, anything like that. Everything feels very familiar. You know, we're in Spa. Feels like Spa. You know, they retain that, which is good. Just everything looks gorgeous. I would really be curious to feel this car in the aggressive preset because I, I feel like I'm using a lot of steering angle to get this car to turn. It just feels a little on this preset. It's very stable, but it almost feels sluggish to turn in. Um, acceleration doesn't feel as brutal as it is in the Audi R8 LMS. The acceleration in that car definitely feels a lot faster. This preset in this car makes it feel a lot more stable easier to drive uh, out of the gate, but you do kind of feel like you wish it had a little bit more turn in reaction, which the aggressive preset might just give you just that. I had to get off the throttle just a hair to try to transfer the weight forward and really get this car to turn. So I didn't go flying off the track. You can see how much steering angle I'm giving it there. It's almost like my degrees of rotation have gone way up, you know. Give it one more lap and we'll jump in the next car. I really didn't have to slow down as much as I did there, but it was kind of instinctual because I don't feel like I could really get this car to respond. Feel like if you could uh, tune that steering response, this would be a bad car to race against. Because it just feels so stable otherwise. If I had a faster steering rack in this or something like that, um, Kind of like the type of car I would want to like get super aggressive to throw around, but just the steering feels so slow to react right now. It's not inspiring me to do so. Just the rest of the chassis, 
the rest of the chassis is really nice. But uh, yeah, we'll have to definitely come back and revisit this one in the aggressive preset. You can see I'm like sliding out to the to the curb there. Brakes are really good. Really good brakes. And I don't know if it's just because maybe it doesn't have the same top speed as the Audi R8 LMS. But I'm like really having to wrench over to the, uh, the steering angle to get this thing to turn. Again, through the pits here, we're experiencing 100 frames per second, just like we were before. Tires kind of cool down quickly, too. We're already starting to experience some bluing on the tires just driving through the pits here. All right, so let's experience the next car. So far, out of those two, just those two alone, they felt very different from one another. And that's that's kind of what sets this title up for success. I mean, you have nice, <laughs> nice variety between the cars. Although they are the same class, they, they it doesn't feel like, you know, they're just stock cars or anything like that. Um, I don't know if I want to drive this right now or later because it, so much anticipation driving this car. Quite a bit of liveries here. Sun Energy. You know what? We'll, we'll drive it. We'll drive it right now. I'm just so excited about the sound of this engine. I love how the AMG just sounds. It's just such a nasty car. Green light, go, go, go. So we will adjust the view settings on this one as well. So, um, it actually looks really good here. I do have view of the mirror almost entirely, and I have some view of this mirror here. Um, I like it. Boom. Just roll with it. That works. Oh, look at that. Pit speed limiter. You have all the lights kind of going back and forth. Every car is a little bit different in how they do it, how they show you. Uh, not exactly sure why the the telemetry data that basically judges you on um, how you're driving in ACC on i believe the last session it was working this one it says disconnected waiting for connection not sure why there you go all right so they they got that deep grunt that that amgs are known for there we go the brakes are not the best very well just may be that things are cold and I'm kind of getting on it because I like to hear it there we go So even this car feels like the steering is a lot faster to respond than the McLaren 
really the McLaren felt like the degrees of rotation were off. I don't know if maybe something's wrong with the car as far as they need to fix that or, or what. But it really, I, that's the best way I can explain it. I, I basically run GT3 cars in this title with 480 degrees of rotation um, just out of personal preference. But whew, felt the rear kind of kick out just a little bit. Um, that felt like I was running with like 720 or even 900 degrees of rotation. I just felt like I was having to turn the wheel way too much. But otherwise, its chassis felt great. So it just might be a bug. I don't know. Car got a little light there, so I'm sawing out the wheel a little bit to hold it in. The shift sound beautiful. Slid the car. Definitely not the fastest way around the track, but Got a little too careless there. A little too careless. Let's return back to the garage. We'll give it just one lap. We'll just use this one around. Kind of curious to see if we will get a speeding violation if we speed through this section here. I've been using the pit speed limiter, but I, I'm not sure what kind of rules are set. We are definitely speeding. And nothing but, you know, maybe. Oh, 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 disqualified for speeding in pit lane. All right. So, yeah, <laughs> they will get you for that. Wow. Okay. Interesting. Okay. So, if we go. Nope. No, we are. We are disqualified, even out of a practice session. All right. Well, uh, I do like the AMG. <laughs> Felt very playful. The turning was very nice, but you could almost feel like a heft to the car, much like you would with, or what you would expect with AMGs. But uh, it, the turning felt great. Everything felt fine with the car. Felt very drivable. Um, like it. Like it. Like the sound. It's a shame it got killed kind of quickly, but... Uh, you know, it is what it is. Jump into this Porsche 991 GT3R. The 2018 model. Green light. Go, go, go. You see this one here doesn't use like a GT3 style steering wheel necessarily. It uses a normal circle steering wheel, but let's change the view settings again. Drop the height down. Beautiful dash display, uh, very clear, very, very clear as to what you're looking at. Pit speed limiter is obvious that you have it on. Look at that, the whole dash turns yellow. You cannot deny it. You can only with uh, my FOV and how I have everything set up, see just a little bit of that mirror. 
Um, I could probably make other adjustments and sacrifices to see more of it, uh, but can't see any of it right now. It still says disconnected up here on the driver tracking um, software that they're using. A little strange, I don't know. The first practice session, I think it was working. I don't know why it says disconnected now. I don't know if it's issues with the server or what. Acceleration, I don't know if it's placebo, car size, what? Feels faster in this car. Whoa, 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 okay. We didn't hit the wall, but uh, definitely tires are way too cold to be driving that aggressive. Car feels very dirty. We're only in the safe preset. And man, this car feels dirty. Very quick reaction. Almost like almost like a go-kart. Very much like a go-kart. Whereas the AMG, Audi, all of them felt like I was driving a car with some significant weight. Felt fun, felt responsive for the most part, but this doesn't feel like a car. This feels like a go-kart. You can see that just getting off the throttle a little bit. At the wrong times, this car wants to oversteer, swing the rear around. I didn't even get up on the curbs. I would not... This is a car I would be interested to see, but I don't know if I would ever need to run the aggressive preset. This is like the R8 LMS as far as dartiness and liveliness, but this legit feels like a go-kart. This is uh, definitely a car I would love to drive on a tight course with a lot of tight turns. This is interesting. This feels very lively like the R8, but uh, different. I mean, light. I, that's, that's the main thing that's coming through with this car is just light. I don't know if it is lighter. It just feels it. It's cars like this that could get me in trouble, though, because I could end up misjudging and throwing it into situations that it can't handle that I think it could so in its own right it's gonna still require some practice from me just like all of them But I could see myself doing some stupid mistakes in this car. Just overdriving the heck out of it. She sure is fun though. Okay. Gonna take a little bit to really get smooth with this. Come on now. Man, I could see some people just completely dusting people with this car. Once you get used to it, and you get a nice setup on it, this is going to be a nasty car to fight against. It is fast. 
And it handles really well. All right, we're not even gonna go through the pits. Let's just jump to the next car and see what we feel. That car, wow, that's, that's a beast. That is seriously a beast. I'm really curious to feel the new Bentley Continental, uh, the 2018, because that looked insane. Uh, Lamborghini Huracan ST. This is a part of the national, it says 24 hour series. All right. Um, let's give it a shot. I don't know if maybe this one has a little bit more power behind it than the Huracan GT3 or larger fuel tank. What could be the case here? Um, Very clear dash. I like the shift indicator. It's got that uh, yellow contrasting background, so you can see it clearly. Doesn't seem to be as much data as you experience with like the Porsche straight out of the gate. Uh, there's seems to be other pages maybe you could flip to, but I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't set up that control yet. Sounds really good. The different colors on the dash are kind of distracting. It's kind of funny. You go from green to blue to, uh, what was that, red? Green's a blue, the yellow's a red. Yeah, you can definitely feel the difference between that Porsche and this car as far as turning. Totally different type of vehicle here. Missed that apex. We're gonna go out wide, yep. This is a car I would use the aggressive preset on. With caution though, the rear end is definitely lively. A lot of torque. You could definitely listen to that. It's just the front end in the safe preset is pushing a lot. 
definitely pushing. So you have this understeer and then when you try to give it a little bit more, then it, the rear end just gets loose and you get to the snap oversteer. The safe preset is good with this car. But I think if I was a little bit more experienced with the car, I would want more. Sure, with a tune, this car would be amazing. I just kind of feel like I need to kind of throw it a little bit just to get it past the front end. But then I'm going into a dangerous situation with the rear being so torquey and willing to spin the rear tires, you know? At least that's just how it's feeling. I don't know if that's exactly what's going on, but it's just what I'm feeling right now through the steering wheel. Oh, oh, oh! We saved that one pretty well. The sand kind of caught us really quickly. Entertaining car to drive, but I can't say it's one of my favorites. Definitely sounds amazing, especially through there with the echo of the exhaust kind of bouncing off the pit lane walls and all that. Definitely an impressive sounding car. Fun car to drive, but I wouldn't say it would be on my list if I'm trying to win a race. Um, Honda NSX. This is like uncharted territory for me i don't know what to expect with this car i've never driven this car in any other um session well in any other scenario not not night racing nothing like that so i really don't know what to expect with this car at all So view settings again. Um, looks like distance. We're actually going to have to back this one up quite a bit. Uh, heights. Let's lower it down a bit. Beautiful uh, backup camera or reverse camera, I should say. Um, rear view camera <laughs> it's perfectly placed i could see the whole thing there and i could see about half my mirror on the left so spatial awareness is going to be really good with this car i'm going to be able to see around me really easily making it a lot easier to drive look at that look how clear that is it's like it's almost like cheating <laughs> There is a little bit of a um, little bit of a hit in frames, probably because of that rear camera, that rear screen right there is definitely impacting it just a hair. You know, it's like two frames, maybe three difference.
So straight out of the gate, this car feels like the suspension's really smooth. It feels super planted. Like my tires are not even all the way warmed up yet. And I'm... I don't know if I should be able to do these things. Like, it's making me feel like it's making me into a better driver um, than I am. So, it feels super easy to drive. I don't know if it's ignoring the tire temperature because I feel like I'm doing things well besides that I just kind of feel like I'm doing things I shouldn't be able to do and you can kind of tell by we just warmed up the brakes put it that way my brakes were deep blue because we really weren't using them much on that opening lap which is a little odd Sounds pretty good. I, I don't have any point of reference for this car, so I'm just going with what they're giving us. Felt very comfortable through there. braked at a point that I would love to be able to brake in other cars. Downshifted super rapidly and accurately. I don't know. I'm not even getting a lot of telemetry from the curbs. I don't know if the suspension's soaking them up. Not much through the wheel in the way of curbs. It's a very, very strange car. Um, feels like if you're driving it, Feels almost like cheating. Because I don't feel like this car should be able to do these things that it's doing in the handling department. Very impressive. Even in the brakes, this car is an absolute animal with the brakes. I don't get it. I mean, I feel like maybe they might have more work to do on this car. I don't know. It just feels too easy to drive. If I were to do a race and I'm all in for just wanting to win. This would probably be the car I would use. Just purely for the confidence it throws in. And how well it does. I mean, The acceleration out of the hole is not, it's not its strong point as far as compared to the other cars, but the way this car handles is just 
unfair. <laughs> this is amazing. I am just so confused right now. I don't know how to feel. Breaking at the same point I always break, I felt like I braked way too early. I, this past lap, went on some of the turns in fourth gear or third gear when I would normally go so in far. third and in second gear. This car is crazy and I'm not sure if it's because the physics need to be tweaked. It just feels like driving this car is an unfair advantage. This is um, this is insane. So let's check out the next one. That was... I'm confused. I don't know if that's how that car is supposed to be. But if I want a weapon right now, that's the car I'm going to choose. A GT3 car right there. That was something else. All right, so the Lexus RCF GT3. Looks like the Emil Frey Lexus Racing Team is, uh, which is the same Emil Frey team that has the Jaguar. So um, I don't know if they had them both at the same time or if this is two different generations of cars, but very interesting there to see let's see let's make sure So, yep. All right. The stream is. So, I don't know if that affected anything. I I was just kind of warned by my wife that she didn't get any notification of the stream. And it looks like the stream was unlisted. I don't know if that's how it is normally. Um, but I just changed it to public. And it changed the icon from unlisted to public. I don't know why a live stream would ever default to unlisted. Um but it did. Change this all here. And again, hopefully that didn't actually affect anything with you guys. If it did, I apologize, but hopefully you could watch this video later. Um, Green light. Give it all you can. Again, we are in the Lexus RCF. Let's change this distance here. Start to see the steering wheel, the virtual steering wheel. Uh, okay. That way we at least we have some idea as to the size, the virtual steering wheel and where we should place ours. There we go. All right. I like that. So we could see the whole left, just a corner of the right. So this car sounds 
pretty crazy in the pits. A really deep gurgle. I like it. Dash display is actually really cool. A lot going on there. A lot of information. Not very simple to look at and just see information. So you got to kind of drive this car a little bit and see where the information you need is. Um, I'm sure there's other pages in here you could cycle through if you have the button set up. But right now we're in the RCF just to kind of get an idea as to how this car feels. So far the, oh, wow. This felt like, listen to that. What the heck? Whoa. This thing sounds amazing. Wow. How do I get my car sounding like this? Turn in feels good. Feel smooth too. Tires are still kind of cold. And we are moving. We are moving. If you're just joining in, thank you very much. It's a set of course competition. Opening day version 1.0. We're just jumping into each car, putting a few laps around Spa. Seeing how it feels. So far the NSX felt like the cheat mobile. That thing just handles ridiculously well to a level that makes me question whether or not they were finished building it. This car is very close. But man, does it sound so freaking good. This is up there with the AMG, in my opinion, as far as sound. And the M6, BMW M6. Brakes are really good. This rear end is lively. The NSX just felt like it was on rails it just felt like it was driving for you it really did this is close but this feels a little bit more realistic a little bit more uh, plausible ah uh, see we missed we messed that up there. And the NSX, that is the break point that we used. I couldn't downshift fast enough. And I couldn't break fast enough to get us to stop in time. Very interesting. Now the rear end is a little, a little overheated. I cannot get over the sound that we are going through right now with this car.
My gosh. Beautiful car. Absolutely love it. I didn't think I would like the Lexus RCF. I thought it would be kind of boring. I was not expecting that at all. That was that was almost like a muscle car experience as far as the sound. It just sounded so amazing. That was awesome. Definitely recommended. So we do have another GT3 version of the Lamborghini. I'm not sure if we're going to waste the time today to jump into it because there's just so many different Lamborghinis in this title. I really want to jump into this AMR V12. Few laps with this one now. Kind of see how it feels. Again, we do have chat up on the screen here. So uh, if you have any questions, don't worry about, you know, asking them at all i know in the past we had to always like peel our head off to the left to see anything but it's not going to be the case this time here let's change the view settings as we have been doing for each one Feels pretty good right there. A little bit more of a refined sound in this car. Less of the uh, muscle car note that the Lexus had, which was really surprising of the Lexus. Beautiful insignia there in the middle. Vantage GT3 right below. Gauge cluster is uh, very bright, very clear. See that carbon fiber on the door. You now that's one thing they really did really well in this title. The the level of detail in these cars. Got to give it to them. They did a great job. All right, here we go. We're gonna pit out. Throw it around a few laps. The sound is also very dynamic, very interesting, very different than any of the other cars. Every car has its like own dynamic. Turn it is like non-existent on these uh, cold tires. Every car seems to handle it very differently too. You need to learn your car. This is so, so interesting to see. Oh man. This is, it's actually kind of tough. Much harder than the Lexus and the NSX to drive out of the gate, Let's see what happens when we're fully warmed up. Again, we're only using the uh, safe preset, so any of this, any of these issues that we're having as far as understeer, things like that, might be relieved just by going to the aggressive preset. The echo almost makes the car sound like an indie car. A 
listen to that. I don't know what got into me there. I just kind of got caught deep in thought. Didn't realize I had to slow down maybe for a turn. But overall, very, very uh, entertaining car. Not anything too crazy with it. I feel like uh, I could use a little bit of tuning. I would love to try this car in the aggressive preset. I don't feel as fast with it as I did with the uh, Lexus out of the gate or the NSX. But sounds amazing, looks amazing. I'm sure in the right hands it could definitely, definitely be a weapon. Hey, Dan DiMaggio, how's it going, buddy? Kind of just checking out the 1.0 release, checking out each car, each of the new cars that we uh, now have access to. I got to get used to looking at chat up here now. <laughs> oh, man. I just want to jump right into the... Let's see, I want to see one thing real quick. That was a 2018 model. That was a GT3R. So they are a little bit different. This is a cup car, but um, I'm really curious to sort of jump into this McLaren, uh, this Bentley Continental GT3 2018 model. So we're going to kind of skip that other Porsche as well. Um, we will kind of revisit those, but need those models to come down in price. Oh yeah. Without a doubt. Uh, some of the newer ones came out in higher resolution, but they do have they do have uh, some of them have a lower frame rate, but um yeah, I, I love this monitor. It is very expensive though. That's that is kind of the big drawback with it. I almost find myself using different settings for each car as to distance like seat distance and all that uh let's see now the normal bentley continental i haven't tried it obviously since the update but the normal bentley continental we would uh run on the aggressive preset we did see uh if you're just joining in if you speed in the pits, even in practice mode, um, let's see, we're actually, I feel like we're up looking down. Even in practice mode, it will disqualify you out of the uh, session. Um, might be because we just have everything on pro mode um, as far as... Ah, uh, no, go down. As far as... Um, you know, realism and rules and whatnot. Uh, but yeah, I couldn't even get back on track. Just straight up disqualified me for speeding in the pits. So 
and it was just a practice session, just free practice. So definitely want to keep that in mind. The rules are now in effect. Yeah, and Dan, that's a good point. You'd rather have the frames. Uh, to me, it looks gorgeous, absolutely gorgeous. And right now on Epic with my 2080 Ti, we're only hitting about 90 frames per second. We're the only car on the track. So, you know, that is definitely the trade-off you have to try to make. Sure, with a faster CPU, one could get more frame rate though. I love the mirror placement and the uh, rear view camera placement of of this car. You know, some of the cars, you did see that we weren't able to really see the, the mirrors in our FOV or in our setup, or we can only see a corner of the mirror or anything like that. This car here, we're able to see pretty much everything. It makes it super easy to really navigate traffic. Turning is not as good as the Lexus or the NSX on this preset, but it is very good. I mean, for the weight of the car, the size of the car, feels like it could definitely be a track weapon. Again, we just jumped into the car for the first time, so there's still some I have to learn with this car. But I feel like you could, uh, one can learn this car very quickly. The sound isn't as addicting as that Lexus. That Lexus just sounds, that was the surprise of the year to me. I was not expecting that Lexus to be so, whoa, addicting sound-wise. And I was not expecting that to really spin, well, kick that rear out the way it did. Uh, the mirror quality is has increased, um, but again, we're running everything on the Epic preset, so everything is at the highest level it can be. Um, and the mirror quality is just perfect. We're gonna finish this lap out, and then we're gonna run a short race. Uh, I'm not sure with what car just yet. This. Now that everything is kind of warmed up in this car, this is feeling really good. You could definitely see, though, in the frame rate department, there is a little bit of a. Um, There's a little bit of a frame rate tax that goes into effect with these uh, rear view cameras and mirrors all being in their top quality and so view of so many of them. Uh, frame rates have dropped, but not significant, but I'm noticing like a five to six frame rate, uh, frames per second decrease from most of the other cars we were driving. Honestly, I could see uh, learning this car and it being a very potent track weapon. It feels a lot lighter than it probably really is and it feels smaller than it really is, which is nice and surprising. Whoa. Almost lost it there. Getting too cocky with it too early on. That NSX though, I was not expecting it to feel the way it did. I know I already mentioned it, but it's still kind of bothering me how it drove. On cold tires, we were pretty much not hitting the brake and just nailing all the turns which doesn't feel right to me. So I don't know if maybe they have more work to do on the physics of that car. 
So just keep that in mind. Maybe drive it yourself and post in the comments what you guys think. Um, this this was very impressive, very lively. I did like this car, but I think sound alone, I need to go with the Lexus. So we're gonna do a quick race with the Lexus. Just a very quick one. And we'll see how um, the 15 minute race, we'll see how AI now interacts with us. Um, we'll leave opponent skill on 95. Should do the race in the Lexus. You got me curious about this. Oh man, wait, just wait. It's about to happen. On aggressiveness, we're going to put that on 90. Um, I'm sure the AI is going to dust us, but we're going to go back to Spa. Being that we just spent so much time practicing there, might as well put it to some use and we'll run the Lexus. Uh, let's see. And there we go. Yep. We'll just jump right in. I don't know where we're going to grid. Um, I don't think I set a grid position. If I did, I apologize. All right. So it looks like we're starting off fourth. Uh, frame rates are down 45 right now. 63 now that it zoomed in on these two cars let's see what it looks like in car so we're at 60 60 right now Come on. contact up there AI is at 95 aggressiveness at 90 So far, everything is running really good, really smooth. I'm noticing some frame rate drops, but overall, staying above 60. Oh, we are really wide there. Ferrari came right around us. Our tires are just cooked. We couldn't handle it from going off the track before. We have been pushed back to eighth.
on, what did I do? What did I do? That sound is just awesome. This car just sounds amazing. I'm I'm not racing my best right now and I, I really just don't care. <laughs> I'm just having fun listening to this car. Still eighth, eighth position. AI hasn't taken each other out at all. No weird oddities. Now that the car is kind of spread out a little bit, again, we're running it on Epic on our 2080 Ti. Uh, we are now above 70 frames per second in that last sector there. Way too wide. Drag race with this Lamborghini here. Ah, oh, we went out wide. He got me.
Car definitely loosens up as time goes on. Granted, we weren't kind to the tires at all in the beginning. <laughs> I didn't want to get off the throttle on that one. Kind of like in a little hole, we're like two seconds ahead, the car behind. Oh no, oh no. All right, we didn't hit the wall. Woo, thought we were definitely going for the wall there. Missed the apex, we ended up going super wide. Man, that turn is killing me. Touching the curb on the inside just... 
We're just losing it now. I don't know if it's how abusive I've been to this car and the tires or uh, if it's fairly usual, but it wasn't like that in the beginning. So it's just going to require some practice with these new cars and how these cars handle this new track on ACC. But uh, yeah, touching that curb is, uh, you can kind of almost see it there. The car almost wanted to kick the rear out a little bit. But I wasn't quite going fast enough. Burning Star, how are you doing, buddy? Oh, no, oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, not on the last lap. <laughs> touch the curb. I touched the curb. Uh, and we have some visual damage now. I, you know, I didn't mean to crash. I, well, I meant to crash. Let's put it that way. I meant to crash. And just to see what would happen. <laughs> so we got dirt on the windshield now. Uh, the steering wheel is twisted. We got, I can't turn the car. Um, we have some actual damage to the outside of the car. Because I can see the, the hood is shaking now. Um, and it's popped up more than it was before. On the last lap. Oh, man. Well, it's nice to see the damage model actually show, like, dirt on the windshield and stuff like that. Ah! Oh, man, this feels funky. You can tell something's twisted underneath. Uh, you can see the steering wheel just shake. Oh man. Turn! Turn! Oh well, it was fun. I still really like how this car sounds. I think I'm going to definitely work on this car a little bit, practice with it. Because besides the AMG, this is one of my favorite sounding cars. Even in the pits, it just sounds like it's like an American muscle heavy camped car. Like, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I'll go in the pits here and we could experience it. See if it's actually going to allow me to. Stop so that way you guys can hear. Ah, uh, it turned the engine off. 
but uh it, it definitely it almost has like an american muscle sort of sound very impressive so everyone that is the first video just like an opening sort of we looked at a lot of cars a lot of new cars uh back to back and we did a quick short race in a Seto corsa version 1.0 we've been waiting for this day to happen and it is finally here So everyone, I hope you enjoyed. I hope you had fun. Uh, hopefully it was somewhat informative for you, just kind of burning through the cars real quick and giving you my quick and dirty opinions on them straight out of the gate. Uh, this Lexus, again, was one of my favorite surprises. I love how it sounds. Um, initial driving, I love how it feels. It definitely, the car kind of started uh, giving up a little bit on me as far as the tires go quite quickly. Although I was... I wasn't driving well at all. So I was kind of overdriving the living heck out of it. So I'm sure 99% of it is my fault. But um, yeah, I was definitely very surprised with that car. The NSX, again, I'm just going to reiterate one more time. Felt like maybe they need to work on the physics a little bit. I'm not sure if a car should handle that well on cold tires. Um, if you haven't seen that, when this video goes live, rewind. Go to when we were driving the NSX. Uh, we were essentially just going full on out, straight out of the uh, the pits, barely even using the brakes. It just, it was too much. Um, enough to actually make me feel like something was wrong. So, um, but everyone, besides that, I love the models of the cars. I love how beautiful everything looks. Um, as we were racing now on Epic, on the epic setting um with cars on the track we did have love the 911 but a bit but a bit slippery tires gary rgb how you doing buddy um but yeah like i was saying we're we're racing on epic on the epic setting we did have somewhat lower frame rates at the beginning of the race um but as the cars spread out a little bit, we still had cars in front of us. We had a lot of cars in front of us. We were still then getting frame rates to where we were before when we had to scale graphical settings back. So I think they did some graphical optimizations. You can see we kind of went super wide there uh, because we were getting frame rates in the upper 70s, low 80s at some aspects of the track. Uh, this replay here, we're hitting about 68 to 70 frames per second. Um, for a replay with all the cars on the track that's actually pretty good with graphical settings maxed everything is maxed so um you know i'm sure on high it's still going to look beautiful and we'll get some more frames uh everything felt great otherwise all the cars felt very different from one another one another uh burning star you love the 911 but it's a bit i'm assuming you're saying slippery as far as the tires go uh the 911 r the yellow one um felt very darty like very quick to react just like the uh r8 very quick to react uh felt to me like a go-kart so that would be an interesting car to drive next uh, but yeah i'm i'm excited i'm i'm really happy and surprised they released this many cars on opening day i thought for sure we were going to get two or three cars three max and then they were going to as updates went on, released more and more cars, like a lot of other titles do. But um, yeah, very, very surprised they released this many cars to Gate. I thought for sure the NSX wasn't going to be ready. Um, good job, Kunos. So yeah, that's my first opinions on the Assetto Corsa Competizione version 1.0, complete with a terrible driving race at the very end. But uh, yeah, definitely if this video is live or if you want to watch it when it goes live in just a little bit, uh, kind of go through it a little bit and you can see each car as we just jumped into each car and did three to four laps at Spa and I gave you my opinions of each. Um, so yeah. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you for watching and we'll see you all soon.